Hi, this is Laura Chapel from Wireshark University and Chapel University. And in this video, I want to show you how we can use Wireshark to pick up plain text usernames and passwords from unsecure applications. And I'll be using FTP as my sample unsecure application because by default, FTP will send your username and your password in clear text. So I've set up an FTP server on my network and I'll run FTP off of this local host. Now, if you want to sniff someone else's passwords and usernames, you would have to be somewhere in the data path. So that may mean that you need to hub out or use a network tap, or you may need to span switch ports, or if you're in the wireless world, you'll need to set your wireless adapter to promiscuous mode if it will do that. Or if you are, like me, on a Windows machine, you would want to go get the Air PCAP adapters from Case Technologies. So the first thing I'll do is I'll show you my available interfaces. Here you go, I just clicked on the very first button in the icon toolbar. This is the interface I'll be working with, this NVIDIA Enforce MCP networking adapter driver. So I'll click Options here. Now I've applied a filter, a capture filter, because I'm not interested in any other traffic other than the traffic between my system and the FTP server. So I put in a capture filter for host, 192.168.0.105. That's my FTP server. And I'll click Start. Now I'll go ahead and launch an FTP session. I'll type in FTP and then the address of the FTP server. And we can see in the background there's the handshake process taking place and there's the banner coming back in Wireshark. It shows us all that information. I'm being prompted for my username now, so I'll type that in and now it's asking me for my password. I've typed in the password and it's been accepted so it says I'm logged on and I'll just take a look at the directory contents. Now we actually have two connections to that server. One connection for the commands and another connection for that directory information that I asked for. I'll type quit and now we'll go back to Wireshark and see what we've learned. I'll click the stop button because I don't need to capture anymore. Go to the top of the trace we can see the ARP process leading up to our handshake process. There's our SYN, there's the SNAC, and there's the ACK. We've made a connection to the 192.168.0.105 server. Here we can see, just in the info column even, we can see the banner coming down to the client, and there we can see the client send user Laura. So user is the command, and Laura is the actual username. Inside of the details window in Wireshark, we can see that there's an FTP portion, and we can see that it's broken down according to the command and the argument. If we scroll down a little further, we will see that it's requesting a password, and there's the password in clear text. Now in Wireshark, when you are following a conversation like this, it's nice sometimes if you're paying attention to the data that's being exchanged, to right mouse click and say you want to follow the TCP stream, you can also follow a UDP stream or an SSL stream. This is a TCP stream, so I'll select Follow TCP Stream. A window appears that shows me all of the data that's been exchanged in that stream. The traffic that's in a blue background is coming from the server. The traffic in a red background and red text is what's coming from that client. So here we can clearly see the username and the password in clear text, the port command to open up a second connection for the exchange of the directory listing. There's my request for the directory listing and there's where I said quit. I'll go ahead and close this out now and remember that when you do that follow streams you will see that you now have a display filter. So if you don't want to see that anymore make sure you click the clear button up on the display filter line. It's important to go through your applications and check and see if they actually have clear text usernames and passwords in them because if you can listen in on that you need to assume that someone else can as well. Hopefully you'll take a look over at the tips that we have online at wiresharku.com for more information on using Wireshark.